Hi everybody, this is uh, Mark Weitzman. Uh, for those in the uh, U.S., happy 4th of July. And um, I'd like to, um, in this video, I'd like to talk about technical books that are sort of outside of physics and mathematics proper, but are sort of um, related to fields that phys physicists are usually very interested in. Fields such as um, electronics, computer science, programming, some uh, technical aspects of finance and derivatives. So um, I'm not an expert in any of these fields, so I'm, these books that I'm giving are probably not the top books in the field. Most of them are books that I sort of picked up while taking MOOCs on the various subjects. Some of them I've had, some of them are very old and I've had um, before the MOOCs and everything. And um, a lot of them are, um, you know, like I have the second edition of The Art of Electronics, which is a classic electronics book for experimental physicists. It's not for engineers. And it's rule of thumb type of electronics and everything. But um, it's, a, it's an excellent book. It, you either love it or you hate it. And I never managed to finish mine. I, at one point, I hoped to do a lot of electronics, but... Um, I guess I'm a theorist and I, uh, I never got around to um, nothing I do ever works, let's put it that way. So um, one of these days I plan to take a uh, electronics course at a university. And this one is based on a course at Harvard. So this is a classic book and it comes with a, um, comes with like a lab course as well. You can get all the parts and it's, you know, you can sort of do the course by yourself. If you want to learn electronics the way physicists need to use electronics, this is an excellent book. Um, moving on, um, this was the book that was used for the um, Introductory Electronics MOOC at MIT. It was one of the best MOOCs I've taken at MIT. This was the book for it. A little bit dry and everything. It's like 1,200 pages, longer than it needs to be. But it does cover um, the material. And um, it's, um, it's by Agarwal. I, I don't think I pronounced his name right, but he was the head of MITx and edX for a while. And um, this is a, a famous course that he teaches. I highly recommend it. And it's... Um, the introductory electronics course at MIT. Um, then there's this excellent book. This is a book that's written by Paul Nayan, who writes a lot of popular uh, books. This is sort of like a popular book, but um, it has so much math in it, and it uses MATLAB, and that I, I think it's more of a technical book. But I, if you really want to learn about how radio works and everything, he covers the history, the math, the whole thing of all the um, AM and FM discoveries and everything, and uh, spark transmitters. and the, he, he goes into a lot of mathematics. That's the thing. So definitely this is sort of like a technical book, even though it's supplemented by a lot of things. I highly recommend all of Nahan's books, but I think this was one of his best. And another book that I've had a long time that I came across, this was a course at Caltech, The Electronics of Radio, where you're supposed to, the book comes with uh, an associated kit to, to build a uh, NorCal-like shortwave receiver or something like that. Again, I bought all the parts, I invested in everything. But I've never gone through it all, and I never got it to work. And um, But this is a really good book to learn about analog electronics and um, radio and everything. And I'm trying to get to the table of contents here. Yeah. Um, but it's sort of one of those books where you go through it, and as you go through it, you learn a lot about it, and then you build it as well. And um, so... If you have an interest in learning electronics, this is another good book. Finally, this is a, this is not really an electronics book. This is a very old book from like 1979, but it was a classic.
by Carva Mead, Introduction to VLSI Systems. It was like one of the first books on, you know, large-scale integrated systems and computers. And it's sort of like just, it's just a classic book. And, um, you know, like I said, a classic book which changed the world that says it all. And um, so if you want to learn about it, the history of, of, you know, how it got started and everything, and the book is still relevant in, in, some, in some ways. So um, I highly recommend it. Um, now, um, another book that's very old on materials and everything, you know, there was all this hype about nanosystems and how we'd have molecules doing computing and everything. And this was all covered in this book, but I still don't think it's come to fruition. Some of it probably has, and but it's sort of been bypassed. This was before quantum computing took off. Like I said, this was like a book from 1989. But um, it's, it's very physics-y. So if you like, you know, if you want to read about condensed matter and various physics systems at the molecular level and, and how it works and everything, um, this is a start. It's been, I'm sure it's been superseded in many ways, but it might be good to just, you know, take a look at it. Now I'd like to turn to um, computer science books. Um, so this is a book. It's a huge page. It's the, the reference in the field on algorithms, and it's about like 1,200 pages, and it's a it's a very dry, boring read, but if you want to learn how certain algorithms work, and it covers them all, um, this is the book. And there are other books on algorithms that are shorter, that are more interesting, but this one just covers like all the algorithms, sorting, data structures, you know, advanced graphs, algorithms, and, and just about everything. So it's in here. It's used for a lot of uh, graduate level courses on algorithms, and um, it's, it's the classic reference for the field. Another book that I, I highly recommend, this book, this is a book that um, I just was taking a MOOC from Santa Fe with the author of this book, Christopher Moore, was teaching. It was a very short MOOC, but the book itself is, is quite long it's about a thousand pages and it covers everything about complexity and just all the various parts of it and he's got a lot of asides on number theory and you know there's a lot of mathematics in here he doesn't go through the detailed mathematics but he references it and talks about it and just covers everything in like computer science it really is he talks about everything about computation and this is a really um exciting read you know, unlike some of these other books, which are sort of on complexity theory, which are sort of dry, this one's really interesting. He writes really well, and um, he covers he covers it all, in different areas. So I highly recommend this book. Another book that I took for a MOOC, I think it was given by Berkeley or something or Stanford. This was a MOOC, one of the first ones on artificial intelligence. They had like 150,000 people showed up. Peter Norberg, I think, was teaching it. He's from, like, Google, I think, and, and Stanford. And um, they cover just, you know, just about everything in, in the modern approach. This is, I think, the second edition. It's really up to date. Modern approach on artificial intelligence. So if you want to learn about, get started in, in AI, uh, you know, this is a really, really good book to start. Um, just uh, everything. And um, it's, it's a, it's a well-written book, and it's, it's kind of, like, interesting to read and everything. It's not uh, boring, and they talk about philosophy and everything in this book. So I highly recommend this book. Another book that I, I really recommend reading, I don't remember whether I got this for a course or not. I think there's a course at Stanford on information science, and that's the basis of um, this book. But if... I, one time I had a friend who kept asking me these puzzle type problems, you know, the five people, they either have red hats or black hats, and they can't see their own hat, but they can see the other guy's hat, you know, on and on, all kinds of variations. 
And this book basically shows you how to solve all those problems, and it has a lot of those problems in the book itself as exercises and how to solve them. So um, I think that's why I got this book, um, because I solved a lot of the problems, but he kept asking me new ones and different ones, and I finally I got to um, things. Anyway, it's all about information, encryption, public key cryptography, and you know, it just covers the whole field of information. So it's definitely... Um, a wide-ranging book with a lot of good exercises. Very interesting read. Um, the next few books are more like they're in between popular and technical books on computer science. They're, these are ones I read. I read these. They're old books. Some of them have been updated with new editions, but I remember reading them in like the 90s, early 90s, late 80s. This one was like when I didn't know much that much about computer science and I first started learning about public key cryptography and everything and this one was like a real eye-opener for me um, just cooking up all kinds of new methods and things on all from computer science and they're all like six page essays on various areas and um, it's very very well excellent read I highly recommend this book and um, it will get you started on um, various aspects of algorithms and um, computer science. And the next book, this is the book where I think I first learned, it's been updated, but this is the book I first learned um, about public key cryptography and how to like, how to play poker over a telephone line without making sure you're not being cheated, how to toss dice and everything. All the things you want to learn about all these various algorithms. He covers like, you know, not the detail that the reference book that I gave by Corman does, but he talks about all these algorithms and, um, you know, how to, how to think about them and all the aspects. Very good chapter on cryptography, as I recall. Um, next book. This is a book that's like a freshman level book and everything, but it's one of the best books I've ever read on computers. Um, because, you know, there's a lot of books that tell you about the various parts of computers. It was written like in the early 90s. David Eck uh, teaches various computer courses. He, I think he teaches like in Java and, and so on. But the great thing about this book was the timings. I remember it really, he really like went through real computers and how the timings work, the process of them going to fetching from memory and doing all these things without it being that technical like, you know, like a, a, a computer architect. You didn't have to be a computer architect to understand it. But he went through everything with the timings and everything where I finally felt like I really understood how computers work when I read this book. So if you don't understand how computers work, this is an excellent book to read. Um, the next two books, definitely very old. I would definitely try and get updated books. But this was a book about artificial intelligence, games, computers, you know, and it talks about all. I think it was written in 2000, so it's, it's ob obviously obsolete now with, you know, Alpha, you know, Alpha Zero and Alpha Go and everything. But it does talk about how everything that's, a lot of things that's been done in um, games and, and, you know, whether it's chess or Go and, and so on. So it's a, it's a good read. And if you are interested in the history of it, it would be still useful now. Another book from that time period, I think this would be for, if you're interested in chaos, this was a book, you know, Chaos had a lot of hype and everything, and um, this goes back to 1989, and I remember reading in this book about all the applications of Chaos, predicting heart attacks, and all this stuff, and um, this looks like an interesting book. I'm, I just bought a book on uh, algebraic geometry. Anyway, um, be careful of yellow graduate level books, math books, though. Anyway, what I would recommend with this book is that, um, I'm sorry, here, um, it's, it's sort of an interesting read. It shows you all the possible applications of chaos, but I'm not sure how many of them have really come to fruition. So now I'd like to turn to um, a little bit about programming. First, I want to talk about some very old 
books. These are different paragram paradigms. If you're interested in like genetic programming, this was like he's written like four or five books, follow-up books now. But this was one of the first books he wrote on artificial selection and genetic programming by Koza, and um, it's an interesting book. I, like I said, I'm not sure. Nowadays, everything seems to be deep learning and neural networks, so I'm not sure how much of this is even relevant anymore or whether it's ever like come to fruition in terms of being really useful, but at the time it seemed like it could be. And another book in a similar way written by uh, our Godel, Escher, and Bach author, Douglas Hofstetter, he wrote a book about um, fluid concepts and creative analogies and everything. And again, I'm not sure how much of this is, um, it's interesting reading, how much of it is useful in, in the programming paradigms today, I'm not really sure. I'm not even sure that this is what this book was for. Now, 20 years ago, before there was uh, MIT OCW and before there were any MOOCs, I managed to find a course at MIT that was basically open where you could get all the materials and it used this book. And this is a Fantastic book, Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs. It's world famous. It uses Scheme, which is sort of like a dialect of Lisp, which is like functional programming. And it just covers every aspect of uh, computer science from a, uh, like you don't see it anywhere else. And it was like an MIT a course. And this was the standard course. Now they teach with Python and everything. Um, but it was a really fantastic book. I, I just, uh, it opened my eyes. I had never seen functional programming and it's a very challenging book and it has a lot of like number theory and other mathematics in there. But for some people, it's like the best programming book ever. If you're a certain kind of person, it's not the practical kind of programming, you know, like C plus plus and everything, but in terms of, um, opening your eyes on um, different ways of programming. This is like the book. And it comes with a uh, instructor's manual. You should also get that if you get this book. Um, now for more, um, you know, like I said, I started, I'm very old. I started with Fortran and I never did much programming, but the little that I did, I started with Fortran and then Pascal and then I went to Scheme. And then I went to uh, Java. I took the courses at Stanford. They have their first year programming courses on Stanford Engineering any, everywhere. So I took courses on Java, on C++. And then I did some stuff with Apple and Objective-C and everything. But finally I landed on Python. And for the last, you know, since like 2009, just about everything I do is on Python. So the MIT MOOC, their introductory MOOC on uh, programming is uses Python and it's written by uh, John Guttag. And um, it's, a, it's a pretty good book, MIT book. Um, teaches you a lot of things, algorithms and everything. It's not, um, it's not cookbook type. You know, it's um, it's an MIT book. But if you want to learn Python, there's a million books to learn Python. And this is one of them. And um, if you want to learn Python and also do some interesting projects I, I, while you're doing it, I recommend this book. And um, you could take the MOOC too. Um, this is a book that I recently purchased on trying to learn scientific programming. And um, I'm about... 30% of the way through it. This is an excellent book. It covers NumPy, Matplotlib, covers the Python language itself in an excellent way. And it's really like from scientific program, the, the examples are all from science. So it's not, it's not the type you go into a supermarket and you want sale rece sales receipts and stuff like that that you find in other Python books. This is all scientific emphasis. So you'll learn some science while you go through this book as well. And it's a short book, about 500 pages or so on. It's a good reference book. Um, right now I'm taking the MIT machine learning course that they have in their data science program. I think it leaves a lot to be desired. But I took a course from Caltech, you know, it was over 10 years ago now, and it used this book, Learning from Data. 
And this is a great book and a great course, so I highly recommend it. The book is very short, but it has like four or five extra chapters online. Let me just show you. Um, so this is the course site, Learning from Data, the Caltech. You can watch all the videos. These are the 18 videos. And, um, and then they have like, um, if you go to the course website, they have some e-chapters where they add stuff on neural networks, support vector machines, and some EM algorithms. So the book itself, especially when you add these e-chapters, is a lot more substantial, but it's a really good concept book on machine learning. It's not, um, it doesn't emphasize the programming aspect of it. It emphasizes the algorithms, the approach, the logic, the concepts of machine learning. It's a great course for that. Finally, I, I just like to talk. There was a time in my life when I was doing a lot of research on derivatives and stuff. And um, Paul Wilmot, I remember he has a three volume. I have the first edition, I think, which has only two volumes. But he has a three volume thing on quantitative finance. Paul Wilmot fancies himself like the Richard Feynman of finance. He's very funny and he tells a lot of stories and. Um, he has a lot of background, and he seems to know the stuff fairly well as too. I'm not an expert on finance, so I can't really tell what his reputation is, but he seems to do a lot of writing, and um, these books were like really good to read. There was a lot of funny stories in them, a lot of war stories, but also the, the mathematics and everything. You know, he, he covers all the basics with Black-Scholes and partial differential equations and, you know, early exercise in American options and you know, um, risk neutral valuation and all of those things. And then he keeps going, you know, he adds models, he talks about all these things, swaps futures, goes beyond the basic plain vanilla derivatives like in volume two, you, you know, all these barrier options, bonds and, and everything, and then credit risk, and then in volume three, this is stuff he's added, jump diffusion, discrete hedging. So he covers just about every topic short chapters the math is is good and straightforward and and this is sort of like if you've never read a book on financial derivatives you can read springer yellow books where you'll you know it's like taking a math course or you can read um the next book by hull is more of what the business students read it has a lot of math in it too and wilmot's is sort of in between but it's, it's very readable very funny very very uh, entertaining this was like a classic MBA book, Options, Futures, and Derivatives by John Hull. And um, I, I read through this book, and um, it's a classic book. It covers everything like a business student would learn it. I mean, it covers the math and everything, but it's, it's not as um, theoretical. Um, this is a more theoretical book. It's not even really that good. At the time, at one time, it was considered one, one of the few books on the mathematics of financial derivatives. Doesn't get very good reviews. I remember some people like it, some people don't. Um, I, um, I thought it was okay. I had no problem with it. And then, then there's another book where I took a MOOC. This was, I think, for a Yale course on economics and games. It's probably still, um, still there on um, Yale Online, if you Google it. And it was a pretty good book on strategies and games from economics perspective. And um, let me see if I can get it inside. This was the edition that I had. And um, so this was uh, the course book that they used. And, you know, again, you can get do game theory from a mathematics perspective and learn some very technical mathematics, or you can do it from an economics perspective. This is from an economics perspective, but it still uses the basic mathematics, sort of like an introductory book. So, um, okay, that's, um, that's all I have for today. Um, I'll come back next time. I want to do a video on popular books in these areas, in all areas of, like, engineering, computer science, business, um, all the areas that I haven't yet covered on the popular books, you know, some on, um, you know, John Nash and um, Ed Thorpe 
and these guys. So people who use mathematics to like beat the casinos or, you know, in economics and um, beat the markets like uh, Simmons and so on. So I'll come back next time with that. Have a happy holiday. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.